Spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Listen, do not watch this video if you haven't seen the movie yet. Um, I guess this uh, video is going to explain to us everything that <clears throat> probably was wrong about the video and right about the video. But if you'd like to see the original video, the link would be down in the, screen, in the description. Um, his channel is named, hold up, what's his channel name? Let Me Speak. Hold up, no, my bad. Let me explain. Uh, we about to do a reaction to this video he did on Bohemian Rhapsody, Bamboozled Us. Let's get straight to it. Smash subscribe if you like to support the channel. Join the Patreon link in the description. Let's get it. Listen, I like Bohemian Rhapsody, right? I think it's. Hello, 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 hello. Gotta make sure we record. Yep, we record. Let's go. Worth a rent it because I had a great time watching it, but even I who liked it have to stand back and question some parts. Because, like, obviously, if a movie gets the rights to use Queen's music, it's gonna rock you since you like Queen's music. But then you gotta ask yourself if what you're really liking in the movie is what the filmmakers brought to the table, or if it's the soundtrack you can stream on Apple Music back home. Good question. Good question. Especially when you consider some bamboozling that was happening behind the scenes. Let me explain. So if you don't know who Queen is, no, it's not that damn Nicki album like I heard some kids saying on Twitter. Yo, I'm not even, listen, I was on Twitter and I think they had some type of confusion. Her fans like with Queen and the, 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 the band Queen and they thought maybe it was her trendy, but it wasn't her trendy. It was actually the band Queen. And, Listen, it was weird, man. It was weird. Freddie was never that petty. It's one of the greatest rock ah. bands of all time. And what I think is so interesting about them is that I know a bunch of people who know Queen's music, but they may not know anything about the band. So I think it is cool to get these big biopics from time to time. But I think that's true. That's that's why a reason that I wanted to see it because I wanted to know more about him. I think the best part of this movie is Rami Malek, who's been in a bunch of stuff, right? My dude has been grinding at it for years, but it wasn't oh, until that one role snap. where people finally started taking him seriously and treating him like the king of acting that he is. I speak Han. Igugu. Wow. As surprised as I am that they were able to catch Rami on video, the only thing that stood out to me about his performance were the teeth. I not know he played in all these movies. Here he was in all these movies and leading up to this big role that he got. And like, yeah, I understand that Freddie had an overbite. I get that's a part of who he is. He even says that that's why he's able to sing the way he does, but... Why'd y'all make my boy Rami look like the duck from Chicken Little? <laughs> I know that a lot of complaints are about how the movie is paced super quickly, right? I completely agree with that. I know my dude's got a song called Don't Stop Me Now, but man, did y'all rush to their limelight overnight. We would go from them being broke in a broken van to touring and like two scenes later, Freddie glanced at a cow and somehow got inspired to write Bohemian Rhapsody. They were coming up with anthems the way superhero movies come up with their group names. Come a long way since the garage. <laughs> gotta, gotta say, it's fantastic. It's interesting though, but I, I do get it because you know it's just like they gotta fit everything in that, that two hour, you know, format. So you know they probably had to, you know, kind of bend some things and you know just to make it fit. And while I know that some of y'all gonna call that nitpicking, I understand that. There's actual behind the scenes stuff to it. Latest movie goes way back to when Sasha Baron Cohen was supposed to do it, and that oh, man wow. would have killed it. If you haven't seen Sasha do his more serious roles, he can sing, he can act, he can definitely look a lot like Freddie Mercury. Dang, he really would have. He looked like him without even, like, with the full get up. That's wow. But then the rest of the band hit him with a big no after his pitch, and since he was under pressure, he just left. Now, I didn't think much of it because if you know Sasha Baron Cohen, you know. He's made some projects that are really out there, so when people are saying that he wanted it to be hard R and it was supposed to be super wild, almost disrespecting the legend, I can see how it could have gone overboard. <laughs> so instead, they went for Dexter Fletcher, who did Eddie the Eagle, but then another one bit the dust and he was gone. They then get Brian Singer, who loves working with young talent, but then in the middle of filming, after getting like two thirds of the movie done, dude just stopped showing up because he was having conflict with some of the people. He got fired, causing them to call Fletcher back up to finish it. I just wanna give a big shout out to this dude because he didn't even care that he was getting credit. My man just wanted to make sure that the film about this legend was done. That's the real one right there. Um, like for real, like to uh... That, 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 that lets you know, like, that's someone, when you have someone that just wants to see 
things come out the right way. You know, this was a legend. You want, and as a fan, you would want that. You would want the, the movie just to come out, you know, as as good as possible. Unlike other directors. But then that took me back to the Sasha Baron Cohen scenario, right? About him quitting because he was having problems with the band and then the band just saying that he was going to disrespect Freddie Mercury. But what if the band was lying? And what if some of those lies made it to the movie? Hear me out. Remember in Straight Outta Compton how all the surviving members, or most of the surviving members, got a say in the movie as producers, and because of that, some of the incidents involving Dr. Dre just got brushed over. Meanwhile, there's a fabricated scene of the late Easy e staring up at a Chronic poster in despair. And he's just full of jealousy. The Chronic wasn't even out yet. Point. <laughs> I did not even know that. Wow, fam. I... I think I seen that movie like once. It was really good. Though. It is that the living get to tell your stories, and sometimes if they're the ones who are in the movie, they get to switch or omit things for their benefit. There's even another movie out there called. Be That's that. You know what? I'm happy Eminem kind of did his already in Fifty Cent. You know, in a way. You know, they they did it in a way so you know, they good. You know, it doesn't have to be a biopic on those two. You know, I, I do think that's 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 a good thing when you actually able to be alive to you know finish that but you know freddie didn't you know live long enough to be able to but i i hope they got most of everything that he would have wanted to happen in this movie beautiful boy that i may make a video on that does the same thing of having the story sway one way because of the producer being able to tell you what to do and my dudes in this movie come out looking like angels compared to Freddy. They were never late. They left the parties early. They were always looking squeaky clean. Hell, one of them didn't even look like a rock star, but your H&R block advisor. So when you realize that some things are made up, you definitely start feeling bamboozled. For example, it took me like 10 minutes to realize that this man right here was freaking Mike Myers until I really listened into his voice. It's my money. I say what goes. Donkey. Don Bruh, I haven't seen what? Mike Myers in so long that the dude turned into Walter from the Big Lebowski. And while his role does bring his Wayne's World role full circle, right? Like I got the point of it and I got what he was supposed to represent in the trial of the band. But considering that it's a biopic about the band, considering it's supposed to be a true story, this dude ain't even a real person. Is what? that going to be a big deal to most? You know, probably. Seriously? Wow. Not since most of us missed Mike and we're glad to see him again. But then you got that scene that builds up to the climax in IMAX, which y'all know I love IMAX. So that ending was incredible and I loved it. But that 20 minute sing along scene for the Live Aid concert is preceded by a scene where Freddy tells his boys that he has AIDS. And not only did they lie about not having performed in years, even though they just finished doing a tour but wow. my dude wasn't even diagnosed till years later so from someone who what wow oh my goodness loves the finale of this movie uh what now yeah i get that movies change up things all the time to manipulate or heighten emotions right and in this case they decided to uh kind of move around some facts in order to really heighten up that scene at the end but some people would say that if it makes the ending worth the price then so what i would say so what about that breakup scene remember when freddie tells him he's about to go more solo than derulo and these dudes act like the sledge sisters talking about how their family's getting broken up how they're so hurt how they can't believe that he's leaving them in order to make his own out these two already had their own what like years before wow freddie ever released his these two had their own so how y'all gonna make a scene where you're blaming him for breaking up the band? There's a film where you do that very hedonistic, illicit, explicit, gratuitous side, but you don't get to s celebrate this human being who means so much to so many people. I mean, what he is gonna be able to do for a new generation, give them the voice, make them feel emboldened and powerful. That's what you wanna see, that aspect of his life. Now, I agree with Rami's point, right? I didn't expect this movie to be a wild wolf of Wall Street party. I understand wanting to keep his legacy intact and wanting to make him an inspirational character. I mean, just look at the relationship with Mary, played by the girl who's never found a street that didn't involve singing. That was the best part of the movie. Like, even though they broke up and she knew Freddie's orientation was different, they still loved each other till the end. When Freddy got that Team 10 house for his cats, he made sure... 
Fab said Team Tin House. Wow. <laughs> His best friend had the house next door where they can replicate that Taylor Swift video. Their relationship was so pure that she was the only one who didn't want to get fully involved with the production because her love for him was for her. Wow. But these dudes over here, I'm not saying it's super malicious, right? They're clearly the people who were closest to him, right? They're the people who knew him best, the people who loved him. But for a legendary figure, y'all gave him the solo effect, you know? He's supposed to be this sporadic, uncaged spirit, and y'all made the most by-the-numbers movie it could possibly be. But if it's supposed to be a biopic, right? You definitely shouldn't be rearranging the truth. Because if there's one person I wouldn't want to mess with, it's the dude who told his own mama that he killed him. Right in like you assigned a TD. His soul's gonna find you. <laughs> Bro! Oh my goodness. Thank you guys for checking out this video. I'm curious to know your thoughts down below in the comments section. Like I said, I like this movie. I I'm being critical of a movie that I like because I know it could be better. But I've still seen this movie twice. I, I recommend it. I just I think it's kind of have the jobs effect and where we talked about it on the Intercut podcast. Which you can check out right here in full. But we had this discussion about how if you remember that movie Jobs, it you know, wasn't the greatest movie. I, I don't think it was terrible. I think it had good intentions, but it did the same thing. It mixed around some facts and timelines. But eventually, years later, we got Steve Jobs, which I think was one of the best movies of that year. So if something like that happens for Freddie Mercury and Queen and where we get this one, but then years later we get like, I don't know, a really crazy artsy one, that'd be dope. Uh, I also think it's really interesting because there's a bunch of backstory that we may not know about Freddie or crazier things to get into. Yo, I didn't even know he was Indian. I thought my man was like a mystic vampire or something. So when I figured that out, I was like... Damn, T-Series would have passed PewDiePie in a flashback then. Other than that, I'm curious to know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Do those switches not mean anything to you? Did you know about them? Let me know your favorite Queen song. All that stuff down below. And don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Or Rami's twin will come after you. Oh my goodness. Wow, man. I did not know a lot of this stuff. Well, because I'm like, I literally just became a fan like three months ago. So it's just like, I, you know, I'm pretty much going off of the movie and you know what i learned and i i was i was hoping that everything would be you know mostly true but wow I, I see i actually has to have to do some research on my own wow but th this video definitely explained a lot a lot make sure y'all go subscribe to the channel i'll leave i'll leave the original link to the video down below appreciate how support me y'all salute